Welcome to the ATP Project, interview with Luke Lehman on hypernutrition part two. In today's podcast, Matt, Steve and I continue our discussion with Muscle Nerds founder, Master Trainer Luke Lehman. We continue to discuss why more is not always better. So, yeah. when would you give branch chain amino acids for someone that mm. wants to grow? How much would, should they take? So, and when? I, I, I would probably tend to give them right after the workout. Post mm-hmm. workout? Yeah, and that's for hyper, hypertrophy and yeah, that as well? stimulate them tour a little bit, you know, mm. that type of thing. Yep. Or you could take it before, like Steve was saying, you're going to block a little bit of the tryptophan, so you're going to have a little bit more energy during the workout. But yep. that's, but, but you'll burn those, a lot of those brains A lot of those. So it's part it's, of that workout. At that mm. point, it's just mm. going to be, it's going to just going to jump mm. into the, the citric so acid So between cycle. meals, is there ever a time really for brain training me sipping on it? Uh, no, no, not no. I don't think so. Now the big thing I've noticed as well, because everyone's starting to say branch chains, you know that everyone's gone excited about branch chains and overplugged them, and then people weren't getting the results they expected. So now everyone's saying that's because you didn't have the essentials. So now a big tra- uh, pattern I'm seeing is what everyone was doing with the flavored branch chain amino acids between meals are now doing with essential mm-hmm. aminos. Is that better, or are we going to see the same sort uh, it's, of stuff? It's, it's still the same sort of stuff. If you take a lot of amino acids and it's not in a, a combined in a food group as a whole complete protein, you're going to have issues. Mm. And um, when I was looking into the research on the essential amino acids, you only need about six to eight grams to get the anabolic effect. And I I remember seeing that this was, I don't know, maybe five years ago, I decided, well, I'm going to take six to eight grams four or five times a day. I'm going to see what (laughs) it'll do. And after about a, a, a seven to 10 days, I was, I walked into the gym and I'm, I said, man, I feel heavy and I can't breathe. I don't know what's going on. I wouldn't go on the scales. I'd put on 11 or 12 pounds. It's like, holy shit, but it was all water and bloat and I was super inflamed. So I got off of it and lost it. But it, 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 it I had pushed it past this point where for, for a couple of weeks, I couldn't look at a carb without blowing up and passing out almost. Yeah. Right. You know? mm. So, it, you know, and that's insulin resistance again, because a lot of those yeah. essential amino acids have you know, uh, they can be converted through to sugars and they'll, they'll help your body to, they, again, they get burned as a source of fuel. Yeah. Mm. You know, so. It's called gluconeogenesis if mm. you want to look up the term, anybody? Mm-hmm. No, no gluconeogenesis. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Actually, thank you very much. <laughs> um, but yeah, in terms of obviously, more, and this is the whole thing about more is not better, mm. and we have touched on it in quite a few different podcasts. Any other specific times where you've seen people taking more because they've gone, a little bit's good, uh, more's a lot better, mm. let's get into it, where they've done themselves some damage or some harm? Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you another story, something, again, dumb shit I've done to myself with nutrition. Um, you know, so there was some research that came out that showed that performance gains from caffeine, six to nine milligrams per kilogram. And at the time, I was probably about 110 kilograms. So Whoa. I, I had, Whoa. yeah, that's it. So you, you're talking about, about a thousand gram. milligrams? So yeah, yeah, about 1,000, 1,100, mm. somewhere around there, right? So I, I tried six grams for six milligrams per kilogram. That works really well. Oh, oh. I thought you said six grams. You took six grams. No, no, oh. but, but I, yeah, so the story, when I tell you, you're gonna, you guys are going to freak out of what I did to myself. So, you know, we were taking high dose, and the, this, you know, 600 milligrams of caffeine, totally fine. As long as you're going to work out, 900, you get quite a bit nauseous. Yeah. And then if you take it and don't work out, you get super ridiculously sick. Yeah. But one day I put 15 pills of uh, beta alanine in one pocket and I put 15 pills of, um, of a supplement that had 225 milligrams of caffeine <sighs> per pill in the other. Whoa. And so they're both, they both look the same. Mm. And so I was working. I said, okay, I'll take the beta alanine. And when I feel that this tingle start to work, then I'll uh, pop a couple of these, uh, I'll pop like two or three of these other ones and I'll go to the gym. But I forgot which pocket they were in. I ended up taking 15 pills with 225 oh. milligrams of caffeine in them. Yeah. And so I was banging out emails. Oh, About 45 bad. minutes later, I'm like, I should feel, I should be tingling by now. Yeah. I don't know. I don't understand what's going on. And then I realized my heart rate was like 140, 150, and I start freaking out. And I realized what I had done. And I went on like this huge four-hour speed walk because I've, I kept thinking <laughs> if I stop walking, I'm going to have a heart attack. And I ended up eating an entire tub of powdered vitamin C, just trying to neutralize trying to it, yeah. neutralize What does the vitamin it. C do? Well, the, it, it, it breaks down catecholamines, right. right? So it helps to neutralize a lot of that. And, and normally, you know, you eat five, six, seven grams of vitamin C, you're going to um, yeah, get disaster pants. Mm. So and <laughs> I ate the entire 
bottle. Wow. Oh, man. It so, did nothing. No wow. disaster pants. No disaster pants. <laughs> the yeah. um, the little green apple it, splatters it, in your underwear. W- would you be looking at taking taurine as well, too, just to protect the heart? Yeah, or yeah but I didn't have any. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. but then, you know it wasn't soon after that I started having panic attacks, and I didn't realize what it was. And, mm. yeah. and it was, I had depleted all my taurine. So I and it's almost taking, like a post traumatic stress disorder. You was. actually set your cortisol levels mm. so high that you become resistant to normal levels. Well, it's not switching yeah. stuff you, off. You've got to remember caffeine blocks adenosine. That's how it works. So, really, and adenosine regulates. You so you, you don't want to block too much of that, and you know adenosine I, from adenosine di and triphosphate. Yeah, 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 the same thing. But adenosine is a sedative um, neurotransmitter as well. I don't want to get too adenosine nerdy with by this. Itself. Right. Yeah. yeah. So adenosine, you, you can prescribe it in hospitals for people having acute MIs and that sort of stuff. So adenosine is a is a is a molecule that it calms you down, helps you sleep, for example. And if you block that with caffeine, you wake up more. But taking, I'm just doing math, three grams of it. Okay, you, you know, the average... Half-life. Okay, let's a, a half talk about half life it. So three your hours. average coffee so is what, 80 milli- 75 milligrams 75 in a cup milligrams. of coffee? In a weak cup of green tea yeah. or normal yeah. one serve of coffee. Your Starbucks venti, the big buckets from mm, Starbucks, 500 are 500 so. milligrams yeah. wow, of huge. caffeine. Yeah. So we're looking at you probably having, what, um, three of those ventis ingested immediately. Well, it's actually six. 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 Wow. Yeah, see, I suck at mass, but I... <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, not the only man. thing you suck at yeah <laughs> uh, just well, ask john yeah <laughs> i don't suck at john not that that's john. disgusting <laughs> anyway <laughs> this, but but you know the caffeine with its half-life of three hours too it's going to be hanging around a lot and even if half of it's gone you've still got a gram and a half the, the the highest i've ever seen done in the medical studies is 500 milligrams and that's for treatment with severe alzheimer's that that's nothing they should just go down to starbucks and get a vento Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what they're doing, well, unstudied. Those, and those not, they drinks, think people do it multiple times a day. Those, those drinks, yeah. you, you know, the, the rock star drinks um, and the uh, monster mm. drinks, I think they've got, you know, some have got 150, some have got 250 milligrams mm. per can, mm. and they load them up with taurine yeah. by two but grams. To, caf- to and hydrous caffeine mm. is very different acting to yes. a caffeine that's found in green teas, coffees, mm. garamas, so. and that sort of stuff. Because we've also got the polyphenols in there that control the receptor, the catecholamine receptor activity. Mm. You know, like you can have the same amount of caffeine out of green tea as you can out of a coffee and then out of a supplement and you'll feel the supplement or you'll feel that that drink, mm. you know, that ready to go drink. You'll feel that what you won't feel the green tea at all mm. and you feel something out mm. of the coffee. Yeah. You know, and they can have exactly the same amount of caffeine. It just depends on the, like, for example, Garana caffeine doesn't give people as anywhere near as much of a crash. It's a slower in and a slower out. You know, we, those we sort used of to have this product uh, way back where called Limitless. Mm. Yeah, you, I don't know if some of our earlier guys would remember that, Matt. And you went more down the, um, uh, was it Garana? What was it that you used again? I forget. Oh, we had so many cool stuff in there. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we had multiple forms Mind of different you. caffeine, but it was all slow. Like we had multiple different forms of caffeine to be absorbed at different rates, so you didn't get a spike and a well, crash. Well, and and in theory, and it went quite well as well mm. too. In theory, but the thing is, that's before we were manufacturing, and I know that that wasn't being manufactured the way that we wanted it to be. If we should re. Take, take that one and dust it off and give it another crack, but yeah. us make it because yeah. I reckon we'd get better results. Oh, hell yeah. Anyway, I know you've got other things in the cupboard you're looking oh, at yeah. for pre-workout. Hey, this is the other thing I'm seeing a lot now. So just in general with overdosing and stuff, people still think they can't overdose on protein. Like you just see, mm. like even the, we've seen the, the studies that were done on, the, the Germans did a lot of studies trying to work out what the ideal a dose of whey was to compare our collagen peptides to. And in those studies, they screened 10 to 80 grams of whey post-workout found negligible differences they did find about 20 grams away was about the right amount and mm-hmm. past there you didn't achieve anything else um so these people that are taking this abundance amounts of whey and adding protein into everything mm. the people just need to realize that what the protein goes in for the amino acids and your muscle so you get the muscle the protein synthesis you get the brain effects you get detoxification effects but the 50 percent of the excess is converted through to sugar or something anyway huh mm. So that's another common one and adds a lot of burden onto the kidneys and all that sort of stuff if you're going crazy in excess. It's a really hard one to be efficient with that. Again, selling supplements way back when, guys that are 100 kilos would go that, you know, 30 grams of protein isn't nearly enough. I'm taking 50 mm. or 60 grams, you know what I mean? And they were looking at not only for post-workout recovery but also going, well, I need the macros in through the day anyway because mm. I've got to get my, you know, 220, 250 grams of protein and whatever they're trying to get. But, 
Yeah, you know I, those studies and they talk about high protein diets. They're not high protein diets. They're protein adequate. Mm-hmm. So what we got? So anything more than protein adequate is unnecessary. Hey? Mm. So you, what do you do with protein in your clinic? And that do you work well, it out per y- kilo body weight? Or? It all depends. So Jose Antonio put out a couple of really uh, good studies in the last couple of years. I think one was six months and one was uh, one year, where they took people at uh, anywhere from two point two to three point three, and even up to six grams per kilogram. Wow and found in most people there's no detrimental effect and there more protein it seemed to be better mm-hmm. yeah but a lot of these studies were also hypocaloric diets yeah. right yeah. so when you're under eating calories you probably need to pump your protein up as long as you can get rid of the nitrogen and that's yeah. part of the problem people talk about having a positive nitrogen balance but again it's the body craves balance right so you can have too high of a nitrogen balance and then you have to get rid of that through the urea cycle and mm. then if you realize wow my sweat smells like bleach i don't understand what's yeah, going on yeah, well your body's yeah. trying to get rid of the ammonia because yeah. the urea cycle is not working correctly because mm. you've got a nutrient deficiency or mm. some or something else is going on right um so we will typically i like the 2.2 to 3.3 uh, grams per kilogram the more uh, carbs i give somebody the less protein i'm gonna give them they don't really need it but if somebody's in a hypocaloric diet and we're, we're trying to save muscle tissue i don't mind using some of that protein to create sugar because mm. when you eat protein you've got a 30 percent reduction through the thermic effect of food then if you're in a lower carbohydrate lower fat lower calorie diet some of that protein will then be turned into sugar through gluconeogenesis which costs more energy mm. so you can put someone in an energy deficit without actually yeah. like severely dieting them mm. by by just through biochemical transformations yeah. Right. Yep. So it can be a but good strategy. In terms then of obviously removing the ammonia and urea, what are you suggesting for that if people are consuming a higher protein than, you know, say say normal? So if they're doing higher than normal and they're, they're getting those those issues of ammonia toxicity, so well, you'll, you see this a lot with guys, they'll do uh, like a super compensation routine where they're training twice a day, six days a week, and then they're eating tons of protein and tons of calories. And then they go home and, you know, guys are when they come back from the gym, they take all their clothes off and string them through the house. And then (laughs) your your wife yells at you and you go back and you grab your shirt and you smell your shirt and it smells like bleach. It smells like ammonia. If that's happening, then you probably need to cut the training down a little bit. You're probably taking it too far and you're catabolic. You need to cut the protein down a little bit. And then what you guys were talking about, the arginine, that might be a good time to take a little bit of arginine or ornithine or citrulline to try to neutralize some of it because those are used in the urea cycle, mm. but you don't need 20 grams of arginine. You just nah. need yeah. two, two or three grams yeah. will do it. And wouldn't, wouldn't citrulline be? Glycine. Citrulline would be the pre- preferred. So like six grams of citrulline or nine mm-hmm. grams of citrulline malate, that's all you need. Mm. Right, and glycine is really fa- one of the other common side effects of ammonia toxicity from this is anger, irrational anger, irritability. And glycine is one of the best ways of controlling the neurotransmitters mm. in the brain, having a mild inhibitory effect to offset the ammonia mm. and avoiding excessive glutamic acids because it's via that that it'll create that kind of temporary insanity. So you should mm. take, yeah. take 80, 80 grams of glycine post-workout. Yeah, that'll slow you down. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, we can stay a bit lower. Like a couple it's of grams a, is enough. It's a, it's a good good way to lose weight when you're amazing. Sh- like you have the Hershey squirts and you're puking at the same time. Yeah, yeah Hershey yeah, squirts. I've never heard that Hershey one. Squirts. Yeah. Hershey squirts. It's funny, you know, eh? when you've got brown chocolate spurting out your butt. Right, there yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was just thinking of Hershey yeah. kisses. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Hey, um, so... Basically, the other one that I see a lot of that I just want to just quickly cover off on is ketones because oh, um, exogenous. No, I know I'm going to stay <laughs> up with it because I'm not going to specifically just talk about the way people are using it at the moment for fat loss. But in my experience, I've had really good experience using ketones as a nootropic, ketones for mental clarity, ketones for anti-epileptic. Man, I used to nail the ketones and go low carb for my exams so whenever i come into study time and exam time i'd go fully low carb get into ketosis and when i wasn't in ketosis i'd be supplementing on the ketones to stay smart and sharp which i'm all cool with except the fact at the moment i'm seeing ketones popping up into everything now being told that it's going to keep you in fat burning mode just just before luke comments because just to give some history as well too matt i know that we've slammed ketones raspberry ketones for example no, raspberry the nuts ketones things make and your nuts explode that was a weird study i read they said your raspberry ketones make your nuts explode and then people said this is a good idea to supplement with i'm going how so, is this yeah and, and, and it's like anything it's like a tool right it's, it's the same as as non-nutritive sweeteners there's a time and a place um you know whatever it may be so 
the way I think ketones in the general marketplace at the moment, especially with some of the network marketing companies that are out there, the claims I think oh, and what yeah. they're saying, they do everything from make you a rocket scientist and oh. you know give you give you wings and they oh, put it in and else, but, breastfeeding and put it into your baby's bottles and give it to your mm. children's and. Yeah. And, but then, then they all keep talking about fat loss. Though. So let's mm. let's again, as as some of the guys, whenever I mention this, this is going to be a hazard moment. Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Mm. Let's talk about uh, you know where ketones, and we've talked a lot about where they've been misrepresented and used poorly, Matt, and you know all the rest of it. But there are some places that they're good and that they do work. But let's okay, Luke, you go first, mate, and then we'll uh. we'll circle back around. <laughs> all right, because because so. I mean, you, you you the look in your face is the same as the way that I feel a lot of time when I hear yeah. ketones. Right? Look, it, here's the thing that people think that all this ketone stuff is brand new. But, you know, I was doing this 20, 22 years ago when I was 18. I was doing like Atkins and South Beach diet and all that. And the, the first recorded kind of low-carb, high-fat diet was in Letters, Letters of Corpulence by William Banting in 1863. 1863. Wow. Yeah, right? Yeah. So this is not a new thing, and everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. So uh, can I talk about the exogenous ketone yeah. ketones first, and I'll talk about ketones as nutritional key like and, yeah and, yeah and how they're being yeah and how they're being u- u- used or misused yeah so okay so you're epileptic great use the ketones because then you're able to eat a normal diet and eat carbohydrates and take the ketones and not have seizures that's awesome hmm. if you're taking it for the brain benefits the brain loves carbs okay so if you can get carbs into the brain properly that is the preferred fuel source you know um can they increase performance and especially uh, cognitive performance? Yes, but the problem is they're really expensive, and the majority of them are through MLM f- fucking marketing things. I cannot stand these MLM people, right? Mm. If you wanna if you wanna ostracize yourself, uh, lose all your friends, lose all your family members, join a fucking MLM. Do you know the, the reason for that is that a lot of people who get into MLMs are not actually business people; they're no, lay they're people. Not. I mean, th- and there are some there are some good companies out there with MLM, and there are some good practitioners. But I understand what you're saying. The rank and file have no clue how to do business, and so then they become an yeah. annoying. But they're can, not can police; I? they can make claims. Yes, yeah. yeah, so that's no what Matt hates. No professional could ever make, and no professional ever would, because we know better. Actually, so when you got a housewife saying. It's yeah. perfectly fine to use for bre- pregnancy, yeah. breastfeeding. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, it can only do good things. And anyone that says negative is just bitchy. I'll tell you a sad <laughs> story. Uh, and I won't mention any names or anything, but there mm. is a nurse who's selling loads of MLM stuff Through at the, the hospital. I don't doubt it. Uh, now, that's scary because you're coming across as a professional yeah. health worker. Yeah. And well, you're selling th- MLM. Th- there's someone else as well, too, that someone I know very close has has recently had an appointment. She went there and they recommended this MLM company's product. When Matt had a look at it, he's like, this is terrible stuff. The yeah. only reason they're recommending it is because there's money to be made in it. Now, I'm not bagging all MLMs. There are some good ones out there with some cool yeah. stuff. But like anything, they're far and few between. Like good companies, mm. they're far and few between, like mm. most things. Mm. But yeah, I understand your it's frustration. Like, I, I'm working with a, a, a AFL guy in uh, Victoria and... Uh, I'm looking at some of the stuff he's on, and I'm, I looked at this. I go, "What is this product?" And I looked it up, and it was an MLM company. I go, and the, the ingredients were just rubbish. Mm. Like the, it wasn't even close to the amount you need to actually make things work. And I go, "Where'd you get this?" He goes, uh, "My doctor got, got it for me." And it was on basically on every single product that that company made. Yep. And I go, "There's not enough of the actual ingredients in any of this to mm. do anything." And it looks like this is probably quite expensive. He goes, "Yeah, it's." super expensive mm. and I go yeah it's you're mm. not it's, it's making your wallet lighter but you're not getting any lighter or faster so yeah. mm. let's take yeah. you off this and put you on some stuff that actually works yeah. but the other thing that the, the thing I have with the ketones as well is they're they're marketing them as a fat loss uh, supplement yeah. they're not a fat loss supplement they they're a byproduct of fat loss metabolism mm. right so if you're ingesting all these ketones it's like the branch chain you're taking tons of branch chains that has a caloric value the ketones have a caloric value. And if you're taking a lot of them, there's a negative feedback loop that makes the body go, okay, my brain has plenty of ketones. I don't need to break all of this fat down. Mm-hmm. So you have people taking it all day and they're, they're taking it for the wrong reason and it's it's being marketed as something wrong and I've got a problem with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as well, you can make ketones for free really mm-hmm. easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I can, like burning fat. Like burning go fat. Go for a run in the morning with yeah. me and I'll even leave my shirt on. There you but go. You know what people want? <laughs> and your pants too, Steve. Oh, 
Pe- Maybe. People want change, right? They want change, but they don't want to do anything. They yeah. don't. They, they want to keep their current lifestyle, but then they want to get lean and strong and all this. It's and a microwave society. That's it. They just. Mm. I just want a product or a pill that will change everything mm. without actually having to change anything. Yeah. Just yep. take this pill. And, and what it, if you can pee on a stick and it confirms change? Oh, well, yeah. you know, you take a ketone and now you're in ketosis. You're not in ketosis. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if I... If I if I ate, you are in ketosis, but you're not ketogenic. You're not ketogenic. <laughs> yeah. You don't have ketogenesis. Yeah, which exactly. Is kind of the point of fat breakdown. Yeah. And it's like if I if I took my blood sugar right now, and this morning my fasting blood sugar was four point five. If That's I good. drank like four hundred grams of glucose and then took it, it would be sitting at like twenty one. Am mm. I now mm. diabetic? Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Am I diabetic for the next two hours because I took a bolus dose of yeah. glucose? That's that's yeah. that's ridiculous to say, but that's what the the, the ketone people yeah. are saying, yeah. right? And the reason why those keto sticks exist is because to monitor people to make sure they don't get too many ketones and mm. get kidney disease. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, per- keto acidosis will kill you. Yeah. And so the funny thing is, is the whole, the original reason why those sort of tools exist is so people can measure their ketones and go, oh, wow, I'm getting too much ketones. I've got to drink more water. Mm-hmm. I've got to increase mm-hmm. my calories. I've got to get back. I've got to burn some... Well, yeah. If you're so di- basically, I've got to protect my kidneys. If you're diabetic, may, I need to shoot up some insulin because i got to get the ketones down. Right? Exactly. I'm, I've got a type 1 diabetic right now out of Hong Kong, and he's on a very, very low-carb ketogenic cell diet because he's got H. pylori and SIBO. Yep. So we're monitoring his beta-hydroxybutyrate. Beta so we're monitoring his blood ketones to make sure they don't get too high. Yep. And he's having fantastic results, but mm-hmm. he knows how to use insulin to keep that in the right Good. area. Yeah. So a lot of people are buying the, the ketometers now, yep. and they'll, they'll take their ketones and say, look, I'm at 0.3, and then they'll take the keto OS, and then, oh, all of a sudden they're at 1.2. Well, now I'm, keto, I'm in ketogenesis. You're not. No, you're, you're got exogenous ketones. Right. Measure, that's what you're measuring and reading. Yeah. And the frustrating thing is in the past, it was all about trying to keep those levels down mm-hmm. and keep the color off the sticks to make sure you're safe. Now people are trying to get the strongest, highest color on the stick as possible. Yeah, they can get they're purple, dehydrating they themselves. And, they're, and they're, they're constantly measuring things. And they got this thing in their mind that if I can change the color on the sticks, I am burning fat. Mm. And it's not the case. They're actually, if you're changing color on sticks, you're, ex- you're excreting ketones. Yeah. Those ketones may be coming from a thing you've drunk or they may be coming from you breaking down fat. Mm. But when you get too many of them, your body can't stop you from drinking these things because you're part of a month subscription. And yeah. so, so basically, um, it sends a message back to your body saying, because this person's on a month-long prescription and they want to actually um, use these products that they've paid for, we're going to have to stop burning fat. Yes. But in the short term with ketones, what these people feel is remarkable results. Mm. They feel energy. They feel awake. They feel strength and power. And it does keep them out of starvation mode. You know, like because the calories and that are coming in, they get less ghrelin. I mean, and this is one of the advertising campaigns they use to sell ketones is you get less cravings, you get more satiety, you get better energy. Very similar things to we get when we're actually not in a calorie deficit. Yeah. And that's what they're actually achieving with it. The, the problem true. is people get dependent on it and mm. they don't want to change anything else. So you have yeah. people, you've got a society of people that have poor glucose sensitivity, they have poor insulin management, and then they take something that uh, they can give them energy irrespective of all these things. Mm. Then they're like, great, I can eat all these carbs and then take these ketones. Mm. So they're going about it kind of the wrong way. Yeah. Like if, if somebody came to me and, you know, ketogenic dieting is, is really popular now and they wanted to take ketones for like, like the first two weeks to kind of get over the keto flu and all that, yep. that's a perfect time to take it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, but you don't want to be dependent on taking it all the time. So in other words, too much of a good thing. It can be used yeah. as a good tool, but again, Absolutely. it's over. But mm. that always seems to happen, isn't it? The pendulum yeah. just swings too far. But it's not a fat loss tool as to the other point. No. Yeah. It's, it's actually a, a performance tool. tool. It's yeah. a brain and a muscle performance thing. And... Hey, does anyone know the calorific? I like saying calorific because it sounds almost like terrific. But does anyone know the calorific value of ketones? I think ketones? it's nine grams per... Uh, that's sorry, same same nine, yeah, yeah, nine calories per gram. That's so the same, same as fat. Same as fat. Yeah, because it acts the same as fat. Yeah. I mean, it's a byproduct of fat burning. Yeah, well, so. as, acetone, yeah. it's, it's very similar structure. It's actually got a big oxygen in the middle of it if you want that yeah. ketone. If, if you want more energy and more calories, just just drink booze, man. There's seven calories. You save two calories and I feel pretty go. good. And you get high. Yeah. yeah. And you probably perform pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for makes you a good dancer you know you feel like yeah. superman you know yeah i but probably burn a lot more calories when i'm drunk i'm a hell of a lot funnier i can dance I'm you're, you're more attractive as well oh you that's what they say when i get other people drunk yes mm. they're called bear goggles yeah mm. bear goggles mm. or beer is that a kiwi version of saying beer goggles are you saying it 
learn how to speak English. Actually, New Zealand English is closer to the original English than the well, Australian. Hang on, that word to. you just said, bear, how bear. do you spell it? B-E-E-R. Okay, so you are referring to beer goggles. Cool, I was B- just trying to get... I wasn't sure if you wanted B-E-E-R. me to wear these hairy goggles with ears attached and go, oh, I've got my bear goggles on. <laughs> Buy myself a bear. Arr. Arr. There she goes again. No one can understand you, she bear. Oh, jeez. <laughs> anyway. Uh, look, funny. Uh, also on the, the, on the ketone thing, and, you know, that's so common for people to want to jump into ketogenic dieting right now. And I, I really like what my friend, Dr. Mike T. Nelson who has like 15 PhDs and he's one of the smartest guys and that I know and he's he's huge into the research and he teaches uh, courses on like metabolic flexibility and he goes look let's look at the ketogenic diet he goes this is a backup survival uh, pathway for when you can't find food mm-hmm. if you're trying to perform why the fuck would you not want carbs why would you want to be in ketosis mm-hmm. when that's like mm-hmm. survival mm-hmm. and when carbs mean performance so what, what we typically teach people is if, you, if you're interested in physique, yeah, go a little bit low carb. Do you have to go into ketosis? Absolutely not. But you might have to go lower carb to increase your metabolic flexibility so that you can modulate fat burning mm. and keep mm. a respiratory mm. quotient where you want it. Mm. But if you're an athlete, you have to have carbs. I mean, that's so, the way but it goes. Every so, time I've gone into ketosis, definitely my strength and my power has dropped. Mm, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and, I think, and I think it, when I was utilizing ketosis as a as a, an idea to help people is because they had over gone too far on the carbohydrates. So effectively, yeah. it's almost like retraining their body. Hey, you don't need as many carbohydrates yeah. as, you, as, you, as you think you need. And giving the receptors a break from insulin so they can become sensitive to it again. But what's really important when you're talking about athletes and ketogenic, while in a ketogenic phase and training hard and pushing their limits and not performing well, but then starting to improve, we get excessive mitochondrial biogenesis. We actually get tougher and stronger. Mm. And it's a good strategy to use to actually improve someone's endurance or strength capacity. But then what we do, it's just like blood doping. You know, then we, mm. prior to the competition, we throw all the carbs back in. So yeah. the whole thing is, is we put them into a deficit. It's all, yeah, the baseball guys, they swing around the heavy bat and then we take it off and off they go. It's the same concept. We make, we put a handbrake on mm. you to make it work harder for you. Like running so that, with the parachute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. then you build up um, extra mitochondria, you get extra energy part production pathways. Then when you throw the calories and the carbs and everything back in, all of a sudden it's like... Whew, Let's yeah, go, yeah. You know? we're, we're going back to that cycling, which is what we talked about at the start, which is about, you know, the high calorie diets, the high, you know, the bulking phases mm. and then the leaning phases. In nature, we have those cycles yeah, all the seasons. time. Yeah. 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 yeah you so, know, if you're living in a really cold environment, there's no fruits you're around. You're ketogenic you know? in winter. Yeah. You're eating you, meat and yeah. you're thermogenic the whole time. And you're you right. Know? It is a backup thing. But if you supplement with ketones, remember, it does downregulate the basal metabolic rate because it is a survival does it system. really? Yeah. So it downregulates your basal metabolic rate. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. It was in our podcast. I don't think you were doing that one with us. Probably not. I might have been. I might have <laughs> been Jeff and notes. I were talking about. But it, but it does. It just downregulates basal metabolic rate, which is not, you know, again, it's as long as you're aware of it and you're mm. happy to, you know, cut back your performance for that time and lose the weight, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, well we, When you talk about the cycling, what, what we typically teach, we teach trainers to think about things biochemically. So mm. instead of like the way we periodize things, you think about periodizing mTOR for a while and then mm. you periodize AMPK for a while. And that could be, that could be, you know, carb cycling, like one day an mTOR day, one day an AMPK day. That could be a few weeks in one and a few weeks in the other, but you're creating that balance, yes. right? And um, yeah, so that's, that's the way people need to start thinking about things and think about things in balance instead of just going full potato and going mm. way on one side and then reacting and going way back on the other side. And that's what we were saying before. Actually, just quickly as well too, this is interesting and a p- plug if you like for the No Way protein because No Way doesn't have any um, leucine or very low amounts but yet it still um, upregulates mTOR but it also has an effect on PPAR as well too. So it's, it's an unusual product that seems to sort of you know, work on mm. both sides of the coin. Yeah. And some mm. things can stimulate mTOR without actually stimulating growth factors. Mm. Like mm. fish oil can stimulate mTOR in a whole different way that's not as inflammatory and still allows for better protein synthesis. Yeah. So cool. there, there, there's mTOR 1 and 2. So just to give you a bit of background with that, so there's two different pathways. Right. What's the difference? Oh, well, one of them has, a, it actually described it very well. You know, one one is the mTOR one that we we, we classically talk about, which which stimulates the growth, growth muscle growth. Yeah, and those are the M- mTOR two is a d- another way to form growth of normal uh, replication of cells in the cell cycle. So obviously, omegas are important for that. So the mm. the AMP perfect would be perfect yeah. for that, and but would have an anti-inflammatory effect as well. Too. Very much so. Hmm. 
and a fat burning effect. You yeah. know, it, it, it's a win 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 situation. And so when you look at it though, just to, for um, AMV product, it's an essential fatty acid product. The, the ability for it to stimulate AMPK is also very high and its ability to stimulate mTOR. And mm. the governing factor, whether it's driving AMPK or mTOR, is your calories. calories yeah. So if you're in a calorie surplus and using AMPV, then you'll be getting more mTOR activity. If you're in a calorie deficit using AMPV, like before fasted cardio, you're going to get more of the AMPK fat burning mm. effects. Mm. So it'll depend on your calorie surplus or your deficit of whether amp k uh, sorry amp v is anabolic or catabolic mm. Mm. that's good i okay. think a, a lot of people need to understand too that vitamins and minerals can do different things they're situational dependent right mm. so yeah. y- you hear people all the time say oh magnesium it's a sleep supplement okay so if it was a sleep supplement if you take an electrolyte with magnesium and then you go squat have you ever fallen asleep during a squat yeah, no exactly it does help sleep yep. it helps relaxation right it's a calcium channel blocker but if you take magnesium and you need ATP and you're stimulating AMPK, then you're going to make more ATP and then you're going to make ATP more bioavailable. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so when, when you have a look at magnesium itself involved in 600 different enzymes, they're not all driving one particular function. Not, not um, all putting you to sleep, obviously. Are they? No, hell no. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good point that with the well, magnesium in particular. You, you actually, you actually, I think you describe magnesium really well when you say it creates an off switch. It yeah. doesn't. Turn it makes it sure off. it's cap- you're capable yeah. of switching. That's off. right. Yeah. So, mm. um, and you'll find that when it, this is, it goes back to our original point. If you are magnesium deficient and that sort of stuff, there is a time and a place for mega dosing magnesium. Mm. You'll know when you've corrected your deficiency and you're going over because you'll get the squirts. Yeah. Um, but a lot of these things don't have those sort of side effects. You know, like mm. a lot of the B vitamins and that sort of stuff. You overdose them they get into your body you might get some colored urine thinking oh that's fine it just goes straight through urine but on the way it creates all sorts of problems you know mm. can i can i address another beef about vitamins when they say oh it just makes your urine expensive and mm. passes straight through you of course it passes through you because if, if you built up with vitamins it'd become toxic yeah yeah so this weird thing that you shouldn't take i mean i shouldn't drink water because that comes out the other end as water yeah I mean, it does see stuff how clear on the way it makes through. your urine mate yeah yeah <laughs> you know and it's like it, it's a ridiculous ridiculous scenario so yeah. you know we, we, we do find excesses of vitamins well, and we do find it's a really you know, good that point that and that's one of the things in the papers they say is the reason why we have got vitamin toxicities occurring right now because we've got a lot of fortified mm. foods we've got a lot of synthetic vitamins going on and people aren't sweating as much so mm. we are urinating and that sort of stuff but we're not perspiring as much so then we can't urinate the excess that we would perspire mm. and that's a major problem with vitamin toxicity it and, to and light. exercise obviously p- panting and out's another way that yeah you that's right. as well too so so, you know, again, if you're sedentary, mm. you're at more risk of obviously overdosing with vitamins. Very yeah. much so. You know, the, the first overdose of vitamins was 1913 with Mertz, of course, in the, the South Pole. Of course. And, and so, you know, when he ate his dog lips, He ate his dogs. Yeah. Or- Oh, what was he, it, vitamin he, A? He, yeah, vitamin yeah. A. Yeah. yeah, he was an explorer. And he so sent himself blind, didn't he? Yeah. Classic sign because the, the first thing that happened to him went blind from excessive vitamin yeah. A. But what do we say? Vitamin A, doctrine of signatures, looks like an eye, helps you see in the night. Does. Luckily, you it get helps with vision purple <laughs> uh, production in your eye for night vision. Yeah. If you want to know that, do yeah. nerdy detail. But, you know, yeah. it, it's... Night it's, blindness. Yeah, a lot of people suffer from that. So yeah. you get some more vitamin A. And vitamin if A. Got, if, you, mm. if you're diagnosed with night blindness. But don't eat your dog's liver, you'll die. No, no, don't eat dog liver. That's bad. Especially if it's supposed to be it, it's funny sleep. because the other guy that was with him, Nins, actually fell down a cravat. So what's uh, so funny about that? No, no, it's funny because what an ass. because <laughs> was this no, guy? no, no, listen no, to no. me, hear me oh, out. Look, you fall over, man. Let well, me it was, you it was down. Oh, uh, if we can make jokes, it's a hundred years ago. We've got that hundred year limit. Oh, it was <laughs> too, soon. too soon, too, too soon. soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so hundred limit, hundred years, I think. But, but anyway, was he blind and didn't see the damn gap? Or was it one of those oh, maybe. Time? Do you know what I mean? Well, maybe that, he was pushed, what, Steve. That's what, oh, this well, is a new twist he on wasn't it. He's probably looking for his dog. No, He's probably walking great around. Stock. Have, Have you seen my dog? He was that dog. barbecue was smells dog. good. Yeah. He, he was the guy carrying, <laughs> carrying most of the food. And, of course, he went down the cravat with the food. So oh, that forced no. him to eat more dog liver. Oh, my god! So gosh. it got worse. After oh. that, so oh, where's uh, this place? Oh, it just sounds like a terrible place. Antarctica. To oh, I'm yeah. never going there. <laughs> no, me neither. No, no, Bloody no. horrible. But you know, of course, you know, Mawson came back and and reported on all this. So that that that's one man. <laughs> he probably pushed them both down. What a load of <laughs> shit! I reckon Mawson. Yeah. I reckon something. He's really the story up. The food. Yeah, something went crazy. Ate all the food. We pushed old mate that was going to say, hey, I'm going to tell old, the other bloke that you ate all the food. <laughs> bet you pushes I'd... him down a crack. No. The other guy, here, here, I made you a burger. Yeah, <laughs> a bit of dog liver. Yeah. yeah. 
watch this little fool go by. And then he goes, oh, this idiot ate the dog. He fell down a hole. So I'm fine. There's a there's a moral of the story to this, guys. <laughs> don't travel with, what's his don't name? Don't let anybody push. Morton. No, don't yeah. travel with Morton. No. Or, or easier, don't let anybody push you in the ice hole. <laughs> Have to edit that one or not? I don't oh, think so. Geez. That's fine. That's fine. Know. It's, a, it's a good one, though. I don't know. Oh, I got away with my Eskimo <laughs> yeah. joke, didn't I, yeah. once before? Oh, you told that one. So you've you've got you had a really good point there about like the sweating. People tend to think that because B vitamins are fat or are water soluble, that you're just going to pee them out or sweat them out. But how many women do we know don't sweat? Yeah. And how many people don't really? pee a whole lot or drink a lot of water yeah you know you get stressed out and aldosterone and cortisol goes up you start retaining sodium you're going to retain all those vitamins and yep. you're not you're not urinating them out yep, yep. La- then- ladies glow for the um yeah what ladies glow men perspire horses sweat oh. yeah anyway that but no, right? that's sexist because a lot of women do perspire okay okay <laughs> 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 See, see, he's trying to be politically correct. No, yeah, I'm I'm trying trying to say. See, this is what happens. This, this is how it goes wrong when you yeah. try to be politically yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Wrong, wrong I'm, I'm, politically the, correct. Hey, I'm the one who has to has to be politically Why? correct around here. Like, it's fine for Steve to cross dress. It's fine for yeah. John to be gay. There is yeah. no problem with that. No, no problem at all. Is why I see anyone listen to the podcast. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> She's the least politically correct person I know. Oh, really? Oh yeah. Can you can you even get vi- like preformed vitamin A in a supplement here? I don't think you can. Oh. I don't even know. No. We'd get you can only TGA. buy carotene. Yeah. yeah, TGA won't let you do it. We'd yeah. have to do it as a food, so but we, we can get food from the naturally U- from the things. US. Yeah, yeah. The US is like the US is like the Wild West. You mm. just get whatever. They don't even. You know what? Yeah. Typically, yeah. dog liver we use here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just dose it properly. <laughs> <laughs> it's beta carotene, right? That's what we have. Yeah, yeah we got crappy beta carotene. The reason why, so in Australia, it's a messed up thing. TGA will not let you make nutritive claims on plants containing nutrients mm. you're only allowed to use synthetics yeah which is crazy messed up and the reason why is because when you register a product with tga you're allowed to register your recipe once it's not allowed to change variation in plants occur so sometimes we might need to add more sometimes we need to add less every time you do that you've got to register a whole new product the only thing that are consistent are things that are synthetically made mm. such as beta carotenes d alpha tocopherol so then back to the loop to the start of our podcast when they do these meta-analyses on people taking vitamins they're not they're taking beta carotene they're taking vitamin e mega doses and when mm. they talk about antioxidants that's what they're talking about vitamin a and e and maybe some c um the rest of the time, everyone's doing everything dodgy and synthetic. So, yeah. mm, And yeah. in Australia, like for example, we talked about folic acid toxicity. If you make a multivitamin in Australia, you're not allowed to use 5-MTHFs. You're not allowed to use mm. the other folinates. You can only use folic acid. Again, the reason why, it's consistent. The levels are consistent. But also, when it comes to studying these things, instead of extracting carotenoids from plants to study, or instead of extracting folate, methylfolates, or standardizing a plant to be methylfolate and then seeing what happens, it's easier to use synthetics. Mm. And then they do all their studies on the synthetics. So when it comes time to make a decision of what is well studied, you know, what should we allow people to use? The folic acid might have a pile of papers a foot mm. high and the, um, and the methyl folate might only be a little bit because there's no one's investing research into it. So mm. then they go, oh, well, folic acid's backed by science. It's proven. It's the real stuff. Mm. And that, that's just how we end up this way. Yeah. And, but the worst thing is too, for us reading labels. So you have a look at a label. You get, if I get a natural plant vitamin A source, um, for a carrot, let's just say, for example, I wanted a carrot extract and I say standardized to vitamin A, I actually standardize it to beta carotene. So people get the hang of reading a label saying carrot extract standardized to beta carotene this much. Then the next product, carrot extract standardized to this much beta carotene, people learn to look for beta carotene and buy the mm. product with the highest amount of beta carotene. They do that for a while, then they go, let's just ditch the carrot bit. We'll put beta carotene. 10 milligrams compared to these guys did one milligram we we heat's better mm. and that's just how we've ended up with these things where all these synthetics are looked at as natural when i tell people that folic acid doesn't occur inside a plant in nature they go oh, what a load of rubbish like that's the most natural yeah, thing they don't benign. believe you hey you know yeah. so but yeah well it's not you know one of the things we've seen um in, in the past couple of years is uh, a lot of people with the bco1 gene issue so they they have a dampened ability to break beta carotene down into vitamin a so 
um, <laughs> what we found was we had a we had a seminar in Perth, and we were telling them you should eat your veggies. You have to eat fruits and veggies. If you're not willing to eat that, you don't deserve to eat any meat. So <laughs> everybody in the class, 30 people, they're pumping veggies, pumping veggies. Seven or eight months later, I come back, and half the class, all their skin was turned orange and yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you have the BCO one snip, that's what's going to happen. And uh, we had some girls in there that had some thyroid issues. They had messed themselves up doing contest prep, and I said, okay, we'll do like a Dr. Dr. Vasquez like vitamin load for mm. like a week. And some of these girls were losing four, five, six pounds in like seven to ten days by taking preformed vitamin A because they weren't getting any out of yeah. their diet. Yeah, man. What Very, percentage that is in the population? Uh, so I can't remember the snip of that, but um, basically what, what you're talking about is that beta carotene converts or the carotenoids fer to vitamin A. Some people have that problem with that gene conversion. It's zinc dependent. It's a few other things dependent. Are they the so, guys that go mental with roacatane? Oh, ro- yeah, yeah. Roacatane toxicity is very common because they use a synthetic form of vitamin A, which is a cis-9 trans-11 version, which yeah. is completely not found in nature. It's pretty high dose too, isn't it? Well, yeah, they they used to use like a lot more than what they do now, but still even now the side effects are horrendous. The photosensitivity is pretty... Yeah, there's a a, 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 a pharma... Well, there's a a medical conference on um, dermatology that I'm speaking at in a couple of weeks and um, they're talking about the dangers of roaccutane there. So Mm. that'll be... That was my first ever referral as a naturopath from a doctor. It was a doctor sent his son to me who had suicidal depression after his dad put him on roaccutane. And he said, look, I just... Yeah, that's all of a sudden it got to become serious. Yeah. 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 It's pretty full on. Guys, yeah, we are running short for time. So Luke, I'm gonna throw over to you. Any last words of wisdom? Oh, or any geez. final requests? Design a meme, come on. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> um look both ways for you across the street. Wow. Uh, okay, yeah, I wasn't yeah, expecting yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, never trust a fart. Wow. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that yeah. is a really good one. Never pass up never. a boner. So but that's Steve's that, right with you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 49 now. Yeah. You know. <laughs> what was that one? I missed it. it. it, it the uh, <laughs> er, <laughs> exquisite erection selection, I think he said. Yeah, that's he good. said ne- mm. ne- never pass up on a boner. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't know what you guys do in jail. That's up to you guys. But yeah, anyway, the um, uh, Matt, do you have anything? <laughs> No, I mean, that's pretty hard well, to well, top. I don't have a boner right now. Is that what you mean? No, it's pretty hard to top. But no, no. We, we can fix that. No, well, oh. this is really whoa, whoa. weird. Whoa. Dude, this has really gone next level. So what, wow. how many times a day do you have to... What, this is weird. <laughs> so you try. So this never passes over a bone. So every time we get Woody, we've got to do something. <laughs> well, we don't, know. <laughs> well, but you should. Really? Wow. We're, we're, yeah. we're wow. married. I'd never Mate, get any gonna... bloody work done. <laughs> <laughs> What's the I'd difference? I don't know. Well, no. Well, well I'll, I'll be in the bathroom, not in my room. What the, the breeze in the right direction? I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh my gosh! There's so much editing right here. Um, Steve-O, any words of wisdom? Look, just don't be careful. The the vitamins. It's not that big, Steve. Put your hands. Down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's about vitamins. That's that's more realistic. <laughs> vitamins are not created equally. We have synthetic ones, we have natural ones. The, the research that, that come up with studies that show that supplement vitamins is bad, like this one, is, is because they're the synthetic ones. Mm. And they're testing things that aren't found in food unless they're fortified back in food. And it's mass medication. And it's still synthetic. Mm. They're yeah. putting synthetics back into nature. It's mm. mass medication. I, I, I'm not a fan of synthetic vitamins at all. No. Mm. And again, our, our catch cry always is eat fresh, eat local, eat organic mm. where you possibly can. Um, you know, and, and this is one of the best things you can do. Food yeah. is medicine. Get back into that. Mm. And again, this is... <laughs> So many times I've heard it, and I appreciate it for those people that have heard this a million times. That's why we created multi food mm. from nature, mm. all the bioflavonoids, and the results that we get are so astounding from people every day writing in testimonials of how they've improved. Mm. Some serious health, some just with regards to energy. Mm. Uh, anyway, well, I, um, you know, I, I, every every class somebody asks about multi food, and, and I, I tell them the same thing. I said, "Man, I looked at the bottle of this, and I said, Matt, you're full of shit." And he said, "Well, try it," and I did. And I went about two months on it, and then when I ran out, like I didn't feel anything while I was on it. When I ran out, I went, oh, man, I don't, f- I don't feel normal. And every person that's come to our courses says the same thing. They didn't mm. no- notice anything till they ran out, and then they were like, wow, I feel off. Yep. Mm. 
and mm. they're going back to normal because it's a yeah. gradual incline, a, a gradual improvement, if you like, in terms of all, so many processes yeah. in the body. And then when you take it away again, it's it's like it's like the stock market. It's like they say mm. that the bull climbs up the stairs and the bear jumps out the window. It's the same thing. It takes time going up, and then boom! All of a sudden, when when it drops, it drops mm. quick. Well, mm. and a lot of people are going to look at that, and they're going to look at the label and think that there's not a whole lot of stuff in there. Mm. But what they're not seeing is what you don't put on the label. Mm. It's the yeah. eight thousand chemicals that we don't have a name for, mm. and we don't know what the mm. fuck they do we just know yeah. they make the, the processes work better what's really funny is that we actually had a conference call we we're waiting for you that's what the meeting we had today with our growers and this demand for this stuff is so high that we're having to ration it like the demand yeah. for our stuff because we're, we're obviously expanding globally now we can't supply it to all of our customers organic in the grown. united states so mm. for us to increase our to buy more we actually grow more farms build more farms and then they grow more food and then each thing we've got to grow it we've got to test it we've got to measure it we've got to predict a yield but we actually got to pre-allocate dirt and patches of garden to us um, to actually be able to keep up the demand and it's it's out and, of control and here's the classic thing mm. if you did the if you did it the wrong way the old way which is synthetic you would never have a problem with supply oh, no. you just go give me that chemical it's as stable as anything and yep. store well, it this is my years. concern though no problem fire up the bacteria feed yep. them some crap yep. yeah what everyone's doing with multi-food uh, you know to compare to or to copy it or something because like you're saying you look at the back of multi-food you don't see crazy levels mm. people still got in their head that more is better mm. that I can't overdose on natural stuff so take as much of it as possible i want more value for my money based on numbers on a label but that is not the way it works we need just the right amount coming through and like you're saying all the other little bits and pieces that are in it make all the difference now what the big concern is is people are getting like greens powders which i don't know what the hell that is it's basically mm. sawdust from the chinese factories with green <laughs> and everything like that. trust me because i've ordered some in to try to test them and identify some things in them and it, you don't want to see the results mm. um but what they do is for a, I can get you about a 60 day supply of a multivitamin premix. It costs a dollar thirty, so I can smi- uh, mix that in with your sawdust, and then I can call it a greens formula standard, and then as a multivitamin. And then the people read on the label, they say, oh, it's got all the carrots and the alfalfas and everything like that. And then I've got on the nutrition panel all these vitamins. Mm. They make the assumption that those vitamins are coming out of those plants, which is not the case. You've got a synthetic blend of crap thrown in with a green coloured sawdust crap Mm. in though you're taking crap I mean the easiest way for me to understand it is like when you're building a house okay vitamins are the bricks but then you need the mortar you need the wire Mm -hmm. you need the windows you need the doors you need the the carpets you need everything to make a house everyone's Mm. grabbing bricks and going I'm going to build a house out of this it's completely useless Mm. so yeah anyway Matt um, was your is that it for you? Because we, we really need to wrap it up. We're going with too oh, long. Oh, gosh. Human is wrapping it up. Yeah, why, why can't we just... Right. We'll just go for hours. Yeah, we'll just chat. That's what we said. But can't. Who said Humpty Dumpty was an egg? <laughs> N- nobody. Yeah, exactly. So why the hell does everyone think Humpty... Typical example of what's wrong with the world. No one ever said Humpty Dumpty was an egg. The whole world roams around drawing pictures of an egg. This is exactly why they think our vitamins are rubbish and synthetics are good. Damn Humpty Dumpty. Mm. I do have one last thing. Yeah. If that's all right. Yeah. So, you know, Steve we'll, talk- we'll make time for you. Steve, yeah. Steve, you were talking about like most of the studies are done with synthetics, mm. but what people need to understand too is most of the studies are done on single nutrients mm. and not multiple nutrients mm. together and not how they are, they're found in food, which totally changes everything. And I, I attended a, a retreat in Costa Rica and Dr. Brian Walsh was there and he was talking, he did a detox lecture and talked about toxicity. And one of the interesting things was when you look at all the research, they're only testing one thing. We don't really yet know what happens when you combine a lot of different toxic chemicals and also what happens when it's when you're taking it for a very long time because what they do is they give s- small dosages or, or they'll give big dosages in a short period of time and there's no synergistic effect. When you start adding these things together, they have a synergistic effect. They compound over time, so mm-hmm. yep. we don't know. It's the same thing with the vitamins. You, you can find all this research that says that a vitamin doesn't work or it does this or does that, but you don't really know unless you see the vitamin with all the other stuff it's supposed to be with, like all the phytochemicals. Yep. It's a classic sign, even B2, for example, it's been shown you overdose on B2, it actually creates B6, B12, folate deficiencies. Mm. So you sit there, they go do a dose of this study and say, this thing's terrible for you. Well, it's like nice and it increased in in one study mortality. Mm. Uh, And it was like, oh, and there was an asterisk on the study. And Mm. it found that they were giving it with a drug the nice and to reduce the flushing nicotine yeah. and what's acid. the drug the drug was banned in 2013 because of toxicity yeah but that's not important 
Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like there was little asterisks in the study and it, and it was published in the Journal uh, of the American you, College of Cardiology. You just have to love it. Any it's opportunity. Like, but you, oh. know, you know what most people do, especially in the bodybuilding world, they read an abstract because they're too lazy to read through the whole thing. Oh, and yeah. Most of them it's don't know. It's on page know. 10. Yeah, most, it's right in the back there. Most people, <laughs> oh. most yeah, people don't know shit. how to read a study anyways. It. I love uh. you mentioned that. Like yeah. Matt was having a conversation. This is when he used to... I don't know how you got into a debate with this idiot. Um, and... Uh, Matt's going through and effectively providing, you know, peer-reviewed articles to support his case. I think some of them were Cochrane, and if I remember correctly as well too. And the guy writes back to him and goes, yeah, yeah, well, you're just an abstract, abstract scientist. And I thought to myself, my gosh, if there's anybody who... So, so let me put it in three. Someone said, oh. have you got any references to support your argument? And I said, yeah, I'm actually playing Lego with my kids at the moment. I can quickly oh. send you a couple through that I can find on my mm. phone and I'll show you how I can find these things quite easily on my phone and you could do this too. Um, and let me give you some examples of how to quickly find free full text articles showing these things. Comes back, you're an abstract scientist, bro, you're and pleb and all that sort of stuff is cool. And I was it's just like, like oh. and then... That's when I actually deleted Facebook because I was actually playing Lego with my boys. Much more important than mm-hmm. dealing Having with fun. someone that was calling me a f- f- and play. That anyway. Um, um, and then, and then I said, I said, hang on, what did you? And then I, I read the comments later. I know about some other people went on and said, hey man, like give him a break. He said he's playing with his boys. He's actually supplied you with the references that you've requested, mm. and now you're attacking him over the quality of the the, the fact that. Yeah, he's provided those references. And, and then he said, what did you expect from me? And the bloke wrote, I expected him to actually pretty much write an essay of what I, I... He expected me to review all of those things, write it down as a in a Facebook comment, still, by the way, and then say my opinion and then cite those references. And I said, oh, man, I'm fucking playing Lego. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the problem when you start... And, and, and in our industry as well, too, it, it's, it's funny. And that was about good. sweetness, by the way. Yeah, right. Oh, it was. And geez. you were proven right Don't time and time, and time again. But Actually, this is the thing. If your mother, mother ever used to say to you, bad company corrupts good character. Mm. Eagles don't hang around with turkeys. I mean, the other one that's really popular is that, what is it, lions don't concern themselves with the opinion of sheep. Yeah. You've got to find me. good people to hang yeah. out with and, yeah. and people who are open to having honest discussions, admitting you know, when they're wrong. And that, that's a hard thing to do. That takes a lot of humility, which there is a great lack of in our industry. You know, Or going back and go, you know what, that makes sense. Even when you approach somebody, they're able to say, look, I appreciate where you're coming from, but you know, that's, that's not what I found. Here's what I found. You know? There's a bit of humility when you know you're right as well too. They're just, and that's what stifles debate. That's what stifles progress is that people are so, so care about their, their profile. They so care about winning a Facebook argument. I love that how to win friends and influence people. If you win an argument, you've lost. Because the person that you've won against hates you for it. You've made mm. them look bad in front of their mm. peers. You know, you have yeah. to be mm. gentle and uh, there's just not enough of that anymore. Mm. There's no there's no gentlemen and ladies anymore. Everyone's just out mm. to slit everybody's throat. Mm. Facebook it is, it's a cesspool. Well, yeah, well anyway, really Jeff, is. we're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> We've already over. gone way over, thanks to you guys. Yes. Sorry. Okay. We we done guys. Last I think th- we're done. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Going, going. Uh, oh, let me tell you this. Thing. Oh, shut <laughs> up, Matt. Thanks, uh, Luke, for coming. It's good to have you back on the show, mate. Um, what are you doing next? We're going to last time for your plug. Have you got anywhere where people can see you? Give a, see. your website a plug, your Facebook page so, a plug. Muscle nerd was uh, plurals. Or? Uh, plural. Yeah. Yeah. Musclenerds.net. Yeah. Yep. We're also on Facebook at Muscle Nerds. Um, I will be speaking at the Irish Strength Institute in late July at their symposium. I'll be speaking. Where's that? That. It's in Ireland. It's Ireland. In Ireland. Oh, or, it's in Ireland. I didn't hear you say yeah. that. Now, yeah, so it's Irish Strength Institute. That will be, uh, I think it's July 25th. They're going to have a huge symposium with a concert and all this cool shit. In like Dublin? or in uh, It's Malahide, which is right outside of Dublin. It's right. a fantastic area, Ireland. Um, and then we've got the Swiss uh, Symposium. That's going to be right outside of Toronto in late October. We have, um, we're doing a course in early October in Atlanta. We're doing one in Vancouver sometime around there. But if they go to the website, we post all that stuff. And yeah. if they get on our page, we post all of that stuff And, too. and what's some of the cool things they're going to learn there? What, what's, what's the hook? Why do people want to go and learn? So there? basically, we, we're just, you know, this is the problem of the industry is everyone wants to teach like advanced this or the other and no one knows all the basic fundamental foundational mm. stuff, right? They want to teach that one weird trick or that one hack without actually knowing the physiology. So what we teach in our, in our foundations course, we teach just basic basic self physiology and basic bioenergetics. So how do you turn, how do you turn food into energy? Where can you find those handbrakes? How do you release those handbrakes? 
Um, and then things like digestion, assimilation, how you actually get things from the plate into the cell. And then we talk about elimination. I talk about poop a lot. And then we talk about the stress response and how stress, chronic stress, creates immune system dysregulation, uh, intestinal permeability, um, long-term inflammation and, and insulin resistance, things like that. And, uh, yeah, we teach people how to fix basically the metabolism. So the mm. foundation course is more nutritional biochemistry. Um, and then we have a program design course that's online. And then you also come to a, a seminar as well. And that, that one we teach exercise metabolism, mm. right? So that way what we're going to do eventually is create one, like a whole year's worth of courses where you do everything, mm. right? And that it's going to... We don't, we don't teach protocols we teach or methods. We just take it because there's plenty of people teaching that. We don't need to teach that. What we teach is why the methods work, what are the actions in the body so that you can pick the right protocols and methods for your clients True. instead of just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Nine <laughs> times out of ten, most experts that you find out there have got good memories and they've learned something by rope. It's very, and this is what I say about mm. Matt as well too and Steve too is that it's very rare to actually talk to people who truly understand it. It's mm -hmm. not just a, I can repeat the study that I've seen, but they actually have an understanding of what's going on behind the body, which obviously, Luke, why you've become so renowned because you understand and you can explain these things so people have a true understanding. Yeah. It's the difference between giving someone a fish or teaching them how to fish. Right. If something's not quite working, you've got the brains to work yeah. it out, not like keep banging your head, this must work, this must work. You know how they say things like yeah, the youth is wasted on the young. Yeah. Like Oscar it's the Wilde. same with basics and that. Like it's so important for advanced people to redo the basics because when you first learn the basics, you know nothing. And then you bluff your way through to pass. You you kind of like you're saying, you rope learn things, you kind of remember enough to pass your exams and yes. that sort of stuff. But until you're actually been out in the clinic, in the real world, trying everything, the basics didn't make sense. No. If you go back as an advanced practitioner and therapist and go back and relearn the basics, the whole thing's all, aha, like, oh, now yeah. like, you, you totally forget these things or you never really had that understanding. Mm. This is why I love chatting with Steve-O so much because Steve-O like, understands the basics. So Now, I know I don't understand the basics very well because I can't teach them to people. Yeah, you know, Steve-O understands the basics so much that where I have little levels of confusion, I can go back and say, Steve-O, what's the... And he can just talk me basic biochemistry because in my training, I did this chem biochemistry and stuff like really early and you get all this bombarded <laughs> with information and none of it makes sense because you don't know where it fits and how it works and what is. But when you're advanced, you go back and redo it like that's yeah. one of the benefits of me. I did a advanced diploma originally. It was only a three-year dodgy course. But then they made it a Bachelor of Health Science. So three years later, after being in a clinic, you know, for three years and working with people for three years with that base amount of mm -hmm. information, I went back to uni to do these advanced things where they just give you a refresher on the basic. I learned so much in that one mm. more year because I had a point of reference and I had something that it made sense to me. I knew where these things fit all of a sudden changed everything yep. i recommend anyone that thinks they're elite challenge yourself with the basics again and i guarantee all of a sudden you'll be spending the whole time going aha oh mm. yeah you have all these light bulb moments the whole way through if cool. you ever mm. speak to someone that's been in the industry 20 years they they spend this time kind of learning some basics and then they go into really advanced stuff when they don't really need it and mm. then they they circle back around <laughs> they realize if i just stick to the fundamental stuff I get results yeah. and I don't have to do anything crazy because I understand that all I'm doing is giving the body some information and mm. asking it to adapt in a certain way. Mm. But if you don't understand that basic level stuff, then you have no idea when you give somebody a certain training protocol, conditioning protocol, food protocol, supplement protocol, mm. you have no idea what it's doing and how it fits, all the pieces of the puzzle fit together. So that's the what we teach. only stuff works if you've built a base foundation with yeah, the basics. Absolutely. And that's yeah. what we always talk about, the pillars, the base foundation, making sure you're capable of inducing change for the advanced movers and shakers to come in and force things to do weird stuff. Exactly. But you've got to have that. a particular <clears throat> capacity or ability. Same as we were talking about magnesium. Make sure yes. you're capable of switching off. It doesn't yeah. necessarily switch you off. The basics make sure you're capable of creating change. The advanced stuff is there just to force a fast dynamic. Mm -hmm. you know? If you're training yeah. like if you're training Usain Bolt, then yeah, you might need some advanced stuff mm. because 0.01% improvement could mm. be 20 more million but dollars. But he'll already bank. be doing the basics as autopilot. As, yeah. The basics for him is autopilot, and then you go to the next level. But like yeah. Joe Average and Susie Muffin Top doesn't need advanced <laughs> stuff. They yeah. can't even walk and chew gum at the same time. Yeah. They, they yeah. think that a peanut yeah. is a solid source of protein. Like, 
there's so much basic stuff they need to know mm. that trainers just bypass and go straight to crazy protocols mm-hmm. when they don't actually, they mm. don't even drink enough water, eat enough yeah. protein. That's yeah, why yeah. it's so important to ask questions for any therapists or practitioners out there. Spend so much time doing that symptom picture and asking questions and don't assume people are drinking water, eating vegetables or actual food. Mm. The yeah. Handbrakes to Health seminar that we did when we went around Australia, one of the most enlightening things for me personally learning is the fact that you're right, we got into relatively advanced levels in terms of you know hormones and the endocrine system mm. and, and all sorts of nutrition things. And you know, all these things definitely have their place and they do work and they're important but the handbrakes to help the the looking at taking away some of the basic things mm. that people overlook all the time and again mm. even with our supplementation with with the gut right with the the multi-food these are actually core foundation products that are way more important than anything else that we sell and there's a couple more to come as well too that matt's worked out that these four products together effectively are it but they're they're really they're incredibly um, sophisticated, but at the same time incredibly basic, and mm. and they're what everybody needs and used to have in their mm. in their diet and then their nutrition when we used to eat well and whole balanced food. Same thing with training as well too. You can see if you skip those base foundation things or you don't have a grip on them and you go down the wrong path, unless you understand them, you can't see where you've gone wrong. Mm. So yeah. I love it, love it, Luke. Thanks for coming on to the show. Thanks, guys. Uh, mate, we'll Jeff, have, you're we'll waffling have a bit. I think we need to wrap this well, up. I, I definitely think we will. We've gone way over time. Way, way over time. time. Um, Steve, Matt, no, get, no, Steve, Matt. get stuffed. Um, and <laughs> oh. will we, these plebs, I can't oh. believe I have to hang around with these. F and terrible. Plebs. Yeah, Turn bad company, mum. Bad terrible. company corrupts good characters, these guys. Absolutely. Uh, and we'll be back next week. Yep. Thanks, guys. Jeff's not here. You've got to be the adult. All right, all right. right. I'll be the adult. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it.